Hi, this is Brian with King Grizzly. In today's video, we're going to take a look at taking some heading text and a subheading and spicing it up by turning it vertical and putting it next to the content it was with, um, just for a little extra design effect. Okay, so how did I get this effect? I first got the idea, I was looking through the Elementor forums here, and somebody was stuck on, they wanted to do this, this was their mock-up, but they, they couldn't figure out how to make it happen. They were getting like overlap problems. They were using some CSS to actually rotate the text, but just didn't know how to get things to line up. So I, I didn't know how to do it either. So I came in here and just played around until I, I figured it out. So let's take a look at how to do it. Okay, so if you look down here, um, I can click on the heading. Oops, I'm in the wrong column. Heading here. And the trick mostly is to go to the positioning of the text, change it to inline, set it to absolute, and then use these sliders to position it how you want. The other piece was on the column that contains all the content. I just use one column, but I set some left padding. The person who posted this tried to use two columns, but I had better luck using one. So let's see if we can reproduce what I did. So first of all, I'm gonna click on the column and I need some space on the left. So I'm gonna use padding, 100 padding. Okay, now how do we get these headings where we want? Let's see what we can figure out. I think I have an extra space there. All right, so I'm gonna to go to advance, positioning. Let's go in line. We wanna position this absolutely. Oh, I need to rotate it. So I'm going to go ahead and use their CSS. If I click on custom CSS and paste what they had, what this CSS is saying is in elementary, you can use selector. And what that means is just apply to the thing I have selected. Don't apply to my whole site, right? So selector. And then what we put in here is called a transform. We could change the number of degrees here. Like I could put in 200. I could put in different values. If you Google, uh, you know, uh, transform properties for CSS, you'll see what different types of effects are available. But for our purposes, this works. Now, I, from fiddling around with this, I had already figured out my, my offsets under the uh, absolute positioning. But when I first did it, it looked like this, right? So I, I put in the CSS, it rotated the text. I had, went to position, I hit in line, I hit absolute, but you still need to figure out uh, how much to slide this thing. And you may or may not want to fiddle around with right justifying the text over here. I can't remember if that made a difference. Um, at the moment, it seems like it's fine. So then I'm going to click on the other one, go to positioning, go inline. Oh, I need the code, right? So custom CSS, paste that. I'm also going to uh, absolute position. Um, that seemed to, to goof up this other one. Um, so, I, yeah, it's not perfect. I just like I said, would experiment with this until I got something that appeared to work. And then I would play around with uh, resizing the browser to make sure it didn't get messed up and so on. And so you can see like on this one, I might try to line this up a little better horizontally with what was my column. Now we need to figure out tablet. So if I go to tablet, um, the column, I, I'm going to check. I still have the 100 pixels on the left padding. For the heading, the positioning seems fine, right? Like this, I get away with it. On mobile, when we look at mobile, you can see I need some adjustments. What I ended up doing is I changed the padding on the column to zero it out. Um, but then on the text itself, I added a little bit of padding on the left. And then for the headlines, you'll see, oh, yeah, I should have gone with right justified text. Um, and again, you can actually go to positioning and adjust these values. So I have to manipulate these to get them to line up how I want it on the phone. Um, that's, a, that's kind of a cool feature on uh, elementors per screen size, you can change these offsets. You can also change the custom width. So depending on how I play with this width, depending on how much text you have, you may have to adjust how much room you have there with the custom width. But then you can see if I size up the screen, it looks pretty good. Like I said, I had to fit, fiddle with the uh, padding on my section up here. 
and on the column and on the text editor. I just kind of play with those until I got something that seemed to do the job. And I also, if I click on the font, I went ahead and sized the font down a bit on the phone. Because if we go to desktop, you can see it was it was a larger font. So that's the gist of it. Um, your mileage may vary, uh, but basically play with your padding, uh, play with the font size, the absolute positioning and offsets, and you may have to mess with the width. So like instead of inline, you might decide that you prefer to use custom and just kind of fiddle with that. Um, for me, it worked well to go inline on desktop and tablet. And then when I got down to the phone size, I changed it to custom and just set a pixel value. But that should get the job done. I would use this sparingly, um, but it is kind of a fun effect. And the nice thing is your markup should still be in the correct order, right? So heading, a heading, and text. Didn't have to do anything weird with the HTML markup to get this to happen. I uh, hope this is helpful to somebody. And if you liked it, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. We'll keep trying to put out helpful videos. All right, thanks.